here? We're so late we couldn't even find the music here to open things Yeah, up. I don't know when to start. You know, Mark didn't play your music last week wow. either. I feel like I'm being shorted or something. I'll try to find it while you're educating the public. <laughs> but then they'll already know we're on, so it will be too late. You look really cute with that hat on, Jackie. Can you span the... Um, no, don't, Jackie. The, yeah, no, no, Please. do it, Jackie. Please don't. Just so people can see how Please don't, cute Jackie. he looks with a hat on. Please don't. <laughs> we're going to take up a How did the show go last week? It was uh, good. Mark, do, Mark does... He's not you, he's but not, he does he's a fabulous you, job he, of filling in for you. He did a good job. Okay. Yeah. I can't yeah. complain. He did try to stir up a little controversy no. over the... Uh, the uh, no. host there on that's, Michigan Ave. That's the old talk show host in him. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Well, he is trying to probably stimulate conversation for his next two hours mm -hmm. on the radio after that. But he does. He, he, he likes to uh, create a little controversy, which is a good thing. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, right. you got to keep the uh, listeners interested. Yes. So. Are you uh, doing work there on your computer? No, I actually pulled up the recent amendments to the Michigan foreclosure by advertisement statute, which I thought uh, you might want to at least mention to your listeners. Yeah. It takes effect January 10th of 2000. There's a lot of things that are changing as of January 10th. Jackie, you're going to have to have someone on the show that um, will discuss that. Well, the, I mean, this one is important because the, this has to do with foreclosures and the right of the uh, lender or whoever buys the property at the foreclosure sale to go in and inspect the property periodically, give notice, uh, and to evict the occupant sooner than the period of redemption. It, well, it's, go it's for really it. Tell us all about it. Oh, all right. I thought you wanted to talk about something else today. Well, but you already started the conversation, so forget about oh, what I, I want to talk right. about. Oh, sure. Here you go. <laughs> Amendments to Michigan's foreclosure by advertisement uh, redemption statute become effective January 10, providing sure sale purchasers a potent new tool to review real property during the redemption period and possibly shortening certain redemptions, uh, as noted in the statute. So if someone's not taking care of the property, they can, they might get, the foreclosure redemption period might get shortened. It's like you're planted in the audience, right? Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big audience of four. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, three. Oh, it's only three because I'm here. I'm, I'm actually... Oh, you don't yeah, care. Right. But so after, when I'm after, talking, after, aren't you in the audience? Yeah, but that's three. Uh, after the sale and periodically throughout the redemption period, the purchaser of the sale may inspect the exterior and interior of the property and all ancillary structures. If inspection is unreasonably refused, this is by the I was going to say, what happens if I say, if, no, you can't get in my if, property? If inspection is unreasonably refused or if damage to the property is imminent or has occurred, the purchaser, this is again the lender, uh, who's typically the only purchaser at the share sale, may immediately commence summary proceedings in the district court, that's landlord-tenant, to get possession. What if the, the lender exaggerates? Well, here you go. Again, it's like you're a plant in the audience. Uh, <laughs> the statute notes that damage includes, but is not limited to, failure to comply with local ordinances regarding maintenance of the property, B, uh, accumulated rubbish, trash, or debris, uh, C, Oh, is there I'm a sorry, definition B, of... B, I'm sorry, B is uh, a boarded up or closed off window or entrance. Ooh. C, so if we have a broken window, don't board it up. Just C, broken. multiple broken and unrepaired window panes. D, So if you have a crack, in, like we have a crack in one of our doors, although we're not being foreclosed on, but we cannot fix that window. We would have to take the door off and take it to someone to fix the pane in that window. Now let's say there were two of them. That would qualify for someone to come into the house? That's an affirmative. Wow. Yeah. Okay, damn it. Multiple broken and unrepaired window panes. Uh, D, a smash through broken off or unhinged door. E is the accumulated rubbish, trash, and debris. F, stripped plumbing, electrical wiring, siding, or other metal material. Well, that I can understand. Sure. G, missing <laughs> fixtures, including but not limited to a, fur a furnace. Water heater or air conditioning unit. The uh, H deterioration below or being in imminent danger of deteriorating below community standards for public safety and sanitation, and or a condition that would justify recovery of the premises under a, a separate section. Again, this is deterioration and uh, damage. Um, 
Boy, I would people, bet some uh, lenders would get pretty aggressive with those. They yeah, would be oh, yeah, pretty liberal well, with well, the definitions. Well, again, and for the third time, it's like you're planted in this audience because the <laughs> next part says exact, or addresses exactly what you're talking about because it says that while the sheriff's sale purchaser is allowed a right of inspection, the statute provides a judgment of possession entered on behalf of that lender or purchaser, extinguishes the right of redemption and title of the property vests in the purchaser. However, the purchaser does have a right to repair once they get notice of it. In other words, if there's a, a broken window or anything else, else like that, the purchaser, or excuse me, the, the occupant or the borrower has the right to repair it, which would then abrogate or eliminate the judgment of possession. So they do have the ability to do that. So the, the lender can't simply use that. What if the lender doesn't that. like how it was repaired? Nah, then Does you're going to get it have to be repaired to a certain standard? For the fourth time now you're planted in the audience because <laughs> there, there's an editor's note that Governor Snyder issued a signing letter requesting clarification of the term, quote, reasonable inspection, end quote, what the form of the appropriate notice is supposed uh -huh. to look like from the lender, how many times the lender can go in and inspect, in other words, the frequency of inspection, and the impact of an owner's measures to protect the property, exactly what you were asking, is the repair done satisfactorily or not? Uh, because as a municipality, the enforcement on codes for owner-occupied versus non-owner-occupied are different. Right. Well, I, again, what, what's happened is, as a result of the Governor Snyder's, uh, quote, signing letter, signing clarification, there are now discussions going on about addressing these ambiguous terms and unclear provisions of the statute. There's no, as of don't you think as of this article, which was the other day, that there's nothing that's been proposed yet. Don't you think they're a day late and a dollar short on this? I mean, our foreclosures in 2009, our closed properties were 85.1 percent, and today they're in the 37 percent, if I'm remembering correct. It's actually, 35.2. So, oh, 35.2 percent. So 50% less. Yeah, look, it, I, I'm, I'm sure that the lenders would have liked to have had the statute in place three years ago when we were going through the height of the foreclosure uh, process. But I, to say it's a dollar, a, a day late and a dollar short is a little bit uh, of an exaggeration. At least it's there so that a lender can, where the property is being uh, allowed to deteriorate, or they're doing deliberate things, removing metal and plumbing, etc. Right, but usually, so the lender can go in and yeah. do something without having to go to the circuit court. This, this now is summary proceedings. Before, what the lender would have to do to get an order to enjoin the, the destruction, to stop it from happening. They'd have to go to the circuit court. Now you can file summary proceedings in the district court. A lot easier, a lot faster. I get my hearing the next week, as opposed to actually having to go to, go to the expense of a circuit court proceeding. A lot easier. So I can still take a lot of plumbing and stuff out of a house in a week. You can, but that's also going to be a criminal offense. It's not it's, like, it's it's a not like, isn't it a criminal offense now? Well, Yes, in certain circumstances, but you have to remember that the owner of the property actually, quote, owns the plumbing and the other... Yeah, but if there's a loan there, on it, your I, loan documents say that you can't destroy the property. My, my point here, my dear, <laughs> is that it's different from somebody who is just a thief who comes in and steals the stuff. This is the owner, so you have to differentiate between right, the Right, but there's, the, in the past there's been plenty of owners who have taken kitchens out of You notice houses. how I only get half a sentence out? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> if I let you talk, I'd never get a word in it. Right. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> so anyway, there, there is a distinction. You but did you hear my story on foreclosures today? No. No? What was it? We actually, I mean, you could learn the alarm in the morning at uh, 6.30. You, you missed it, Laura? I missed it. I'm okay. sorry. Our radio in our, it would our have verified, bedroom. It would, would have verified what you just said, that foreclosures are way down. Way uh, down. Across the country. Yeah, way which, down. Which is a good thing. Property values have, have rebounded faster than anyone predicted. When they were all predicting how long it would take to recoup the equity in one's home, when they were giving those forecasts two years ago, you know, they're talking about 15 or 20 years. The, the increase in values has been uh, and astronomical is, again, I think an over-exaggeration, -exagger but uh, it's been much higher than what was originally forecast. The demand is back, there's no doubt about it. Problem, <laughs> problems still are getting, problem still is getting mortgages. Uh, the lending market won't get worse. January 10th. January 10th. They're going to get worse. The Dodd-Frank Act. 
we'll have to have someone in to explain that to us. That'll be bad, bad news. Well, you, you think it's going to be that bad, Laura? Uh, I don't know. From I what I heard yeah. this week from Bill George. Oh, yeah, Bill George. In, no. in, in terms of the regulatory requirements on lenders yeah. with respect to Banks making non-risky non loans. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. And we'll, Our government is so wise, aren't they not? Well, I don't know why they're in the business of real estate. They're, um, why is the government in the real estate business? Well, again, they're tightening up something that's already correcting itself. Or other other things that have been put in place are helping to correct the the errors that they made when they were giving loans to subprime. Well, right, they started the whole mess. Right, right. and now they're overcorrecting. Yep. They need to just stop, stop. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll put together a summary of what those changes are going to be, and maybe we'll talk about it next week. Am I here next week? Well, next week is yes. Well, how many more? Uh, Thursdays do we have so our listeners can just stay tuned look forward to the end of the year next week's normal next, next week's week normal yeah, day after then, Christmas. then there's no normal for a while oh okay so we're not doing the day after Christmas no all right and so next well, week's wait, our last I, I week I can't swear to that now what's that I think we are doing the day after Christmas okay if you're gonna be here <laughs> yeah are okay. you gonna be here no where are you gonna be I'll be on vacation you'll be hunting or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be hunting. A, he oh, a heater. <laughs> you know, maybe we should get him a electric heater for Christmas. Sure. You have power here in the morning, right? Yeah. We can. All right, so what else do we want to talk about? Yeah. Okay, that's, so that's, that's the change in the foreclosure statute. Those people who are in distress and going through foreclosure, that's to be aware of that. Those people who are and lenders. That, and that process and starts when foreclosure is at the sheriff's sale, right? I yeah. mean, they don't, just because they miss a payment doesn't mean the lender no, can no, come No, 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 this in. is after the sheriff's sale. So let's talk about the data that you find on the internet. I am, uh, I get a lot of phone calls from people that say, well, I found this house on the internet that shows it's foreclosed on. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, there are some websites out there that if you miss a payment, they report that you're being foreclosed on. Just for missing, being late on a payment. How can they do that? I, I, I have no idea. I mean, it's bizarre. And I'm, so we get a lot of calls. Right. Here's a house. And I'll say that's not so that's, on the market. It's Somebody, inaccurate. It's they, inaccurate information. They label it as pre-foreclosure. They, they, they market it as pre-foreclosure. So you're, you miss, you're late on one payment, and these websites are recording them as pre-foreclosures. Where do these, where, where do they come from? How do they get the information that somebody's late? I have no idea. Well, you, is that, you is you that public the, knowledge? No, you can get off of it. If, if you have the ability to get a credit report on somebody, and again, there are limitations on who can get credit reports. Attorneys can get them for litigation purposes or a variety of legitimate purposes. You can't just go and get a credit report on somebody else without their consent. Uh, but you can get this information. But Laura, let me ask you. I mean, who's listing the property on Zillow or these other other sites for sale? It's you're talking about the owner. No, no, no. It's the whoever's going out there and getting that data. It's not realtors. Uh, it, it's simply being put on the, the website as a property which is pre foreclosure or foreclosure, but it's not listed for sale. Is that what you're That's telling That's correct. Yep. That's yeah. crazy. It's, uh, it's and we get those calls often. And as a result of that, what we're seeing, what I'm, I'm reading is several associations throughout the country are starting to pull their data and not do uh, feeds unless it's a realtor-based organization such as Realtor.com. That's going to be your most accurate uh, database for the general public to go find out. I thought what's that if it was the on the internet, it was true. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay. Yeah. No, there's a lot. I'm still there. grasping at straws here. How are they getting this information? I have no idea how to they this get website. But every every lender, every creditor, they are reporting to the credit uh, agencies uh, what the status of payments are with respect to the extension of credit that they've made. Whether it's and that's to the, it's not that's, public. That's not public. No, but if you have access, I'll just give you an example. Okay. Uh, we're doing a collection case against somebody over. Genesee Circuit. This is one of the 
couple dozen examples. And yesterday we ran a report through a company called TLL. I don't even know what the acronym stands for. Uh, we generated an 80 page report of. Uh, Oh my gosh, it tells you, doesn't it tell you what all cars the, they've owned? Cars and, they've owned, the properties that they have, uh, some of the liabilities, not all of it, but it depends upon, we can actually do this on a, on a menu basis. We can get okay. stacked information, but I can get it on just about anybody, but I do have to have a legitimate purpose as a lawyer. That's what I'm saying? Yeah. You have a legitimate purpose. How does somebody running a website, how did they get this information? I, I, don't oh, know. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how they are getting it, what the, whether or not they have a legitimate basis upon it. And is it legal? The, I assume. I'll tell you what, if I were laid on a house payment, maybe I was in an accident and just didn't. You well, know. right. I mean, and well, now well, all of a sudden it comes up as. If there's a lot of reasons why you might it's be just laid unbelievable. on. unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot of work for realtors because now. These in, this inaccurate data has us chasing around to see if it is in fact something that we should be mm -hmm. finding for our client, and then 99 percent of the time, it's just not accurate information. But you, you do know that even if a, a residence is in foreclosure, the standard Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage form, which comprises over 95 percent of the mortgage forms in, in use in the United States provides that up until five days before the foreclosure sale, all you have to do is pay the amount that's in default and you can reinstate the mortgage, even though they've accelerated the balance due. So, I, I mean, I don't know why a realtor would be chasing around uh, these properties where I've got one or two payments in default, when in fact, even in foreclosure, the owner, and it, the plus the period of redemption, I can refinance or I can... Well, I don't think the realtor is, the consumer is, and they're, right. and they're, they're calling contacting us. the realtor. Right. Yeah, but I mean, then the realtor is sitting there trying to chase down what's well, going on. Well, you're, we're you're just trying to serve up. your client. Right, that's exactly right. Yeah, but the problem is they're wasting their time. Well, well I understand well, you that. you don't know that how until does you that, verify the data. How does that initially... How does that information get there? Get there in the first place? Right. I don't know. So, so the moral of the story is beware of what you see on, on these websites and lessons. Bill says it's all true. Yeah, you mean I can't believe everything I read <laughs> right. on the web? I mean, even Come data, on, even data uh, the, if, if a price changes on a piece of property or if it was inaccurately put in just by mistake, um, it takes forever to get that righted on some of or these websites. Or on a credit websites. report. The only, um, the, the best well, website... Credit report is actually easier to correct. Is it? Yeah, okay. you, you can... It's easier to correct than some of these uh, third-party, non-realtor-associated websites. So my, my uh, recommendation is if you need to look for property anywhere in the United States, just go to realtor.com. That's going to be the most accurate. So, right. with that said, are yep. we out of time? We are. Oh, my God, time flies. It's crazy. Um, go to our website, thinkingrealestate.com, and you can listen to this show again. You can always call <laughs> call us. I'm going to do that in 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. And you can always call us. We'll, uh, end of the year is a great time to put your property on the market because other people don't, and so you're highlighted. And people still buy real estate regardless of the time of year. Well, this is a good time. Yeah, seven eight zero three eight zero zero is our phone number. Is it fair to say a lot of people mark their houses down? I I would say it's a good time to put your house on the market. Okay. Whether they mark, That's hopefully kind of what they're listed at a, at the fair market value already. Can we review that next week, Bill? Yeah, the, the foreclosure or the mortgage the Dodd stuff. Frank. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll uh, do a little okay. bit of research and come up with a summary, and then Beautiful. we can talk about it next week. See you next week. Ciao. Thanks, Chris.